In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the Trends tool. So what I've done here is I've made a major update and a recent update here on version 1.0.1.0. And um, it turned out that the Trends tool on the previous version was not really working that well because of Google doing some recent changes. So I completely changed something in the Trends tool. I removed all the proxy stuff that was required. And now what we're doing is we're using a built-in web browser to get the data. And let me show you what I mean. So the Trends tool is awesome. The Trends tool utilizes the Google Trends tool here. So I'm just over at the Google Trends tool, it's trends.google.com. And if you come here and type in, for example, DIY and click enter, you'll get this trends thing. So it's interest over time. So this gives you basically the, um, the search value index from zero to 100, meaning 100 was the most popular in that given time period that people were searching on the internet. So it's a really good thing to see how, you know, what the trends are for certain keywords in the market. But what's really nice is in here, you can see all of those trends together and get some additional data that trends, uh, they don't give you there on the actual page. So let me just show you what I mean. Let's go to, to my keywords here and I'm just gonna um, select a bunch of keywords here, just real quick just to show you. And I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna send selected over to trends tool. So I got them in here. And so now you can select your options. You got a bunch here. You can select the country, the time period you'd like to look at. There's categories. There's also the property. I default it to YouTube search because of um, the nature of the software is to um, analyze stuff on YouTube, but you're not restricted to that. If you click that down here, you do got Google Shopping, news, image, and web search to look at interest of these keywords. So let's go ahead and just do this. And I'm gonna go and um, click go. Now I do want to mention, let me show you how this actually, what is happening behind the scenes. So you see this new little button up here called browser. You can click that and it's integrated browser. And what's gonna happen here is it's gonna, when I click go, it's gonna go on over to Google Trends and start extracting that data. And you can see it kind of working here on the side and getting the data and pulling it into our kind of spreadsheet data grid here. So once it's done, you'll see it's all there. So obviously you don't want to be heavily using this really, really hard because Google will restrict you after you search, let's say a bunch of times really, really quick. Google may be like, hey, wait a minute. You know, you have to wait an additional five minutes to use the tool again. That's totally normal. But what I've done here is in the settings, you see this little settings thing. I had this here before in a previous version, but now if you click it, you can limit the amount of web connections. So after 20 connections, it will pause between 10 to 60 seconds. Now, if you keep that on and activated, then it will pause after 20 searches and you shouldn't run into the problem of having it restricted. But if you do, you just have to wait literally like five minutes and it'll just work again. Now, one thing I do wanna mention here just real quickly is that sometimes you'll go and click go and it might just kind of be frozen here just a little bit. It doesn't happen too much on a PC, but every once in a while it will happen on a Mac. So if that happens, say if this kind of freezes up, just click stop and literally just click go again. Now, usual work. So what the issue is and what kind of what is happening here is in the integrated browser, um, when you go click go for the first time, it, it kind of, the browser might get kind of stuck on the page waiting for this data kind of to show up. And you know, web browsers are a little bit finicky all the time. No web browser is perfect. So that's kind of limitation of using these integrated web browser, but no problem, all you have to do excuse me, like I said, is just click stop and just click go again and it'll just pick up and start going. Um, even if that doesn't work, like, let me show you another little thing you can do here. Let's say if you're you're going along like here and it's extracting and it's kind of stuck, you can also just click this little browser button while it's extracting and you can see if it's stuck here, all you have to do is just click the go or the refresh button up here. You just click refresh and it'll just continue going. So that's just in case if the software gets a little stuck there um, waiting for the data to come from the extracted web browser. You can always just click that browser button, click the refresh or go, and it should just continue on again. So just wanted to mention that there. So now that we have the data in here, let me show you what you can do with it. So, so now you can click the graph here and you can see the actual interest over time within this additional little window here. And in here you can do a bar chart or a line chart and if you just click the little buttons there little circles you can see 
the date and the index. You can also click this to view it directly on, on Google Trends to see it. And you can also save this data to an image, so PNG or JPEG, and you can also save out the data, the raw data, to text or comma delimited file so that you can use in some other program. So that's a cool little thing. And you can also just keep that window open if you like. You just double click and you can keep it open to the side. And every time you double click, it'll just keep open up the charts. So let's talk about some of the other stuff here inside here. So you've got the word count, you've got the character count, you also got the total average index. So when you sort by the total average index, this one at 87, that means this one has the most highest index across that entire data set. So we did over the past 30 days. So over the past 30 days, this has a high in a search volume index. So we're talking like uh, DIY crafts here. Then you look, then if you look down here, it gets lower and lower. So we sort the other way. You'll notice it's not it's just some spikes going on, not a lot of high values going on. Now we can do the trend slope. So when you see a negative, that means slope is decreasing. Positive, that means it's increasing. And so look here, it doesn't, you can't really tell that it's increasing that much, but it slightly is. And same with these ones. So let's look at the other way, let's decrease here. And so this one is decreasing. It's just hard to tell because some of these uh, data values are kind of down here, but it will generally look like that. And then we've got the spiking. So what this does, this just looks at the most recent points. So it just takes a couple of points in the graph. So the points here, and it looks whether or not it's spiking. You see that it's spiking right there. Um, this one is not spiking. So there's just, I don't have enough actual keywords here to get a lot of data, but when you have a lot of keywords and you have a lot of data, and if you expand this out, you'll start to see these trends by sorting these here. So that's really powerful for uncovering spiking trends that's happening right now, or a trend that's been trending to go, you know, kind of increasing over the period that you select. So these are very powerful data points here that you cannot get from inside Google Trends. So that's why I put this tool in here. Now, a few other things you can do here. If you right click, you got access to a whole bunch of cool stuff. You can, um, if you just select anywhere in this row, it doesn't matter where you select the cell, and you right click and you go send to video search tool, it takes that keyword and sends it on over to the video tool so and it puts it in here for you. Same goes for the channel search, sends it on over here. Then you can get search volume. I have another video that shows you how to do that. So you can click this button here or down here, volume data, and you can get you can import free search volume from Storybase or Google. I have a video showing how to do that. In addition, if you have um, a Keywords Everywhere account, you can also utilize the data from there. So you can open that up. I have another video for this as well. So you can see, you can get access to this. So you know, if I wanna select, send all those to my Keywords Everywhere tool, then I'd come in here and do it and grab the data. And now you can compare these charts with G's charts. This is search volume in our search volume, and this is search search volume index. So now you can compare different things there. So that's pretty powerful. But you need an account. This is a paid account over at Keywords Everywhere, which is very inexpensive. I paid a hundred dollars for a million credits. I mean, I've had this forever, and it, <laughs> it lasts for a long time. So it's incredibly affordable. Anyhow, now you can also do. You know your check boxes your filters you do have access to all the filters up here so when you click the little magnifying glasses you got the, all your filters like normal you can do things like uh, copy the keywords you can also copy the selected keywords to comma separated to the clipboard so let me show you if you want to uh, go and copy all of the all of them there and if i just bring up a little notepad and paste it you see that it's comma separated. If you don't want it comma separated, you can also copy it right here. And it looks like that, kind of one per line. You also can change, you can also, you know, convert these to hashtags, which is kind of cool. So if I just say I want to convert all of these to hashtags, just click here and it'll just make them into hashtags like so, separated by spaces. So you can utilize those in your marketing. You can also search um, all these different websites by selecting one of these and say you wanted to search 
let's say, I don't know, Google Shopping. I'm gonna bring that up. And you also have these other options that we have throughout all the other grids. So the other things you have here is you can save the data out to your project file, comma delimited. You can save it to just the keywords if you'd like. You can copy the keywords here again. So that's basically how you can utilize this tool. So I do want to stress that you want to, um, you know, not heavily use this too crazy. You know, don't stick in 1000 keywords in here and just let it go. Cause you remember it is using the little extraction browser, but it is extremely very valuable when you stick in the keywords, you really want to understand and start to research to see the graphs right here and be able to have this sort sorting ability here to be able to uncover those keywords and those trends that you're really looking for for your business. So that's how you use this new trends tool that I redesigned in the latest version of Tube Atlas. Mm -hmm.